The eyes of ordinary people all over the world are riveted by the war in Eastern Europe unleashed by Russia against Ukraine. But military strategists who anticipate future conflicts are looking in the opposite direction, toward the South Asian region, where China is flexing its muscles. American analysts are particularly concerned about the growing power of the Chinese Navy. Why is the U.S. taking responsibility for security in the South Asian region? And what can the U.S. Navy do against the Chinese Navy? You will be among the first to know about it right now. In June 2022, China's third aircraft carrier, the Fujian, was launched. It may seem that three aircraft carriers are clearly not enough to withstand the U.S. Navy and the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. These seas wash the shores of a dozen countries, including South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. The contribution of all countries of the South Asian region to the world economy is almost 50%. Any major turmoil will affect the American economy, and hence the standard of living of Americans. That is why the states are taking responsibility for security in this region. But China has ambitions to influence security to force the U.S. and its allies to make concessions. The U.S. military has to look for non-trivial military means and methods to contain the growing power of China. On the one hand, these measures should not be too technologically complex so that they can be quickly implemented. On the other hand, the cost of such technologies should not exceed reasonable limits, because the waters of the Yellow, East China, and South China Seas are literally teeming with Chinese warships. If parity with China requires the continued presence of a large number of U.S. warships and submarines, then such a measure would be too costly for U.S. taxpayers. And if you transfer ships and submarines from other regions, then this may affect the security of those regions. There is also a third side of the problem. All proposed measures should not be of concern to China. You cannot provoke the ruling Communist Party there to take retaliatory measures. The new concept of security must not serve as a trigger for an arms race. Otherwise, security in the South Asian region will only decrease. Therefore, the U.S. Pacific Command developed a new coastal defense concept based on the large number of military contingents stationed on the islands of the first island line. The concept was called Expeditionary Advanced Base Operations, EBO. It provides for the creation and use of new weapons or the modernization of existing types of weapons that could be quickly deployed on the islands. Aleutian Islands, Japanese Islands, the Diokyu Islands, the island of Taiwan, Philippine Islands, Greater Sunda Islands, the island contingents of the U.S. Marine Corps within the framework of the concept are called Marine Littoral Regiments, MLR. These are small mobile groups of 50 to 100 Marines who must be able to act independently without communication with the headquarters and the commander. Thus, each island becomes an autonomous, unsinkable fortress, holding back the onslaught of Chinese aviation and Navy until the main forces of the U.S. Navy and Air Force arrive. Each island garrison is armed with surface-to-air missiles capable of shooting down enemy aircraft, but the main armament should be considered the Mobile Navy Marine Expeditionary Ship Interdiction System, Nemesis. The Nemesis Anti-Ship Missile System includes the Naval Strike Missile, NSM, Anti-Ship Missile, and the remotely operated Ground Unit for Expeditionary, Rogue, Remotely Controlled Launcher, NSM is a two-stage rocket built according to the normal aerodynamic design. The missile had an aircraft wing and X-shaped stabilizers. In the U.S. specification, NSM is called AGM-119. The developer is the Norwegian company Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace. When attacking with several NSM's targeting object, they can move towards the target along different trajectories. This ability greatly reduces the opponent's chances of survival. The maximum speed of the NSM reaches Mach 0.95. The design of the body allows the rocket to maneuver in three planes, like an airplane. 
The warhead uses striking elements made of titanium alloy. They are lighter and stronger. The developers intentionally use subsonic speed. The supersonic acceleration requires more effort. A more powerful engine and more fuel are needed. All other things being equal, a subsonic missile is capable of flying farther and carrying more charge than its supersonic counterpart. The coast-based NSM has a range of 100 to 115 miles. A solid propellant rocket engine is used as a starting accelerator, which is jettisoned after combustion. Further flight is provided by a sustainer turbojet engine with a four-stage compressor. The length of the NSM is 13 feet. The body is made of composite materials, which are related to stealth technologies. Thus, the engineers solve two problems at once. They stayed in the weight category, up to 880 pounds, and increased the stealth indicator. NSM has a traditional infrared homing head and a TURCOM, terrain contour matching system. This is a missile trajectory correction system and target selection. The firmware includes a database of specific terrain and targets. That is, the NSM may not use GPS. Autonomous flight is harder to track for air defense systems. The Rogue Remotely Controlled Launcher is based on the Oshkosh JLTV armored car and carries two launch containers with NSM. During the exercises, the Marines have already used Rogue. The decommissioned frigate USS Ingram served as the target. In addition to shooting, the Marines practiced disembarking Rogue from a landing ship and then evacuating the complex with the help of transport aircraft. The first units will go into service with the 3rd Coastal Marine Regiment in Hawaii as early as 2023. Then the island garrisons will be armed. But tensions in the Gulf of Taiwan are forcing the Pacific Command to deploy Marine littoral regiments now at the expense of already existing mass technologies. The most tested launch system is the M142 HIMARS complex, which is based on the family of medium tactical vehicles FMTV, wheeled chassis, and therefore also has high mobility. In 2018, the U.S. Marines first used the M142 HIMARS to strike surface targets from the shore. Then the commander of the U.S. Pacific Army praised the effectiveness of the attacks. One HIMARS unit is capable of carrying six unguided MLRS rockets or six GMLRS family-guided munitions. The range of the main HIMARS ammunition is 25 to 45 miles. This range indicator is not suitable for fighting Chinese ships, but this is enough to resist the landing on the coast. And for anti-ship warfare, the latest precision strike missile, PRISM, with a range of 310 miles are suitable. The rocket speed is Mach 3 to 5. That is, these are hypersonic missiles. The specific speed indicator depends on the mass of the warhead and the type of filling. Precision strike missiles should replace the outdated ATACMS missiles, so the new missile was designed for the M270 and M142 systems. On a standard MLRS unit, there is a transport and launch container with four missiles, and on HIMARS with two. PRISM has a homing head with a radar and infrared component. Additionally, inertial and satellite systems will be used. The missile enters the target area using navigation aids. The initial search of the object of attack is carried out by the radar, and the targeting by the infrared head is performed in the final leg of the flight. However, the precision strike missile is not yet available in sufficient quantities. What to do? Wait until 2023? But after a visit to Taiwan by Speaker of the United States House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi, the concept of expeditionary advanced base operations needs to be accelerated. It can't wait. Therefore, as an alternative, the American command is still considering obsolete short-range missiles. MGM-140A ATACMS Block 1, the HIMARS complex on a wheeled chassis, is capable of carrying one ATACMS operational tactical ballistic system. ATACMS Block 1 are missiles of the first years of production, which were planned to be withdrawn from service due to insufficient accuracy. However, for strikes against large surface targets, even obsolete missiles turned out to be very effective. The range of the oldest ATACMS Block 1 does not exceed 100 miles, but the width of the Taiwan Strait is from 130 to 235 miles. 
and the distance between the Japanese islands, where Chinese ships constantly ply, is from 40 to 100 miles. That is, the HIMARS systems, located on the islands, are capable of reaching any surface target with an ATACMS ballistic missile. True, the radius of the probable deviation from the target of the old ATACMS Block 1 reaches 410 feet. This is not a lot for ground targets, but the size of surface objects allows such a significant deviation. For example, the length of a large Chinese landing ship is from 700 to 800 feet, a destroyer from 500 feet. The number of missiles already produced also speaks in favor of the old ATACMS Block 1. 1,650 units are stored in warehouses. At the same time, the cost of these missiles is extremely low, about $500,000 per unit. One or two ATACMS Block 1 missiles may be enough to disable a large landing craft or destroyer. $1 million for two ATACMS Block 1 versus $1.5 to $2 billion for a cruiser or destroyer is a colossal economic efficiency. The weight of the warhead, ATACMS Block 1, is 1,230 pounds. This is an excellent indicator. For example, Ukrainian Marines sank the Russian cruiser Moskva with two missiles. The combined mass of the warhead of these missiles is 660 pounds. This is half that of a single ATACMS Block 1 missile. This means that it is too early to write off old missiles, at least until new ones appear in sufficient quantities.